Well, hi everybody. Uh, here's another quick um, live video on Saturday. It's the Saturday night live show uh, here from the Heimer Motorhome. And uh, I just wanted to give you a bit more of a, an update on where we are with what um, what the issues are with with the with the motorhome and what we're doing about that and how we're preparing to go forward. Anyway, so we've got um, one or two things that we had added on um, to Jasmine Meyer. Um, as it comes from from the factory so we had a reversing camera um, an awning a rollout awning um, uh, a, a solar panel um, and some bits and pieces like, um, like a, an external aerial input so I could plug in a satellite dish at some point I didn't want one fitted on the top um, and uh, external barbecue point, that sort of thing. Anyway, most of that, all good, and it's perfectly fine. But, as you might know, uh, I asked for the um, awning, which is a Fiamma uh, F45S um, rollout awning, to be fitted as far forward on the van as possible. Um, I was assured by the salesman that, that would happen. He, in the event, didn't actually tell the workshop that that's what they should be doing. So they fitted it in what I'm now told is the Hymer recommended position. Well, um, I'll, I'll have one or two words to, to, to say to Hymer if that's true. I'm not entirely sure it is because the end of that awning structure is directly in line with the edge of the door hinges. So um, fitting uh, what Fiamma call a privacy room might be a bit of a challenge to have that on and get the door open so that you could actually walk through. Um, anyway, um, in addition to that, uh, the uh, solar panel we had fitted and the extra battery, extra battery fine, um, that's all fitted in. The solar panel which uh, sort of keeps on topping up those um, two leisure batteries. I was told again, well I asked for it not to be placed near the bath, not the bathroom, the bedroom roof light which is a 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter hole. So it's a square hole with a with an opening roof light. And I asked for it not to be fitted there because my plan was to have um, an air conditioning unit fitted. And it's the Teleco uh, 8400H um, aircon unit that's being fitted on Wednesday next week um, by a and &E Leisure. Um, anyway, they fitted the solar panel about that far, <laughs> so as wide as my eyes are apart, uh, <laughs> that far. Maybe, um, maybe it's about, actually maybe it's about that, yeah, maybe it's about four inches, five inches um, away from the roof light. Now I don't know whether that is enough clearance not to foul up the installation of the aircon unit. Well, and if it is, then I think we'll just go ahead and have the aircon unit fitted anyway, and maybe it will cover up part of that uh, solar panel, which will be a pain, but will I notice it? Unlikely. Um, anyway, so that's that. But while I'm over there, I had a chat with the guys at Andy Leisure today, and they supply um, for Yama privacy rooms. So when you when you 
get the awning. It comes as an attachment. It's maybe about that deep by whatever, however long it is. And it just has a roll of material that, you know, you, you hook on the thing and, and roll it out like a, like an old styly um, shop blind that comes out. And it has two sort of hinge bits that push it out and support it. And then you get a, another pole in the middle that you can fit on um, called a rafter. Well, um, once that's all out, you, you know, it's got the legs down. So it has a leg on each corner out from the van. And you sort of bolt those into the, or peg them into the ground. And then um, what happens is you can clip on, on the side and on the front, on each side and on the front, you can clip on um, like awning sides. So it's that awning material and you clip those on, peg it all down and you've got essentially um, a pretty quick to put up awning, which is nice. Because I, I don't think we're gonna, you know, when we're on our little few days away, you know, each week as we try to do, I don't think we're gonna, you know, have a drive away blow up awning. We're just gonna get out the, um, the Fiamma um, awning, just, just roll it out, protect us a bit from the sun or the rain or whatever. Um, it'd be nice to have a privacy room if we're pitched up somewhere for a few days. And that was always the plan really, to have that. Um, although I was asked at the point of sale, uh, do you want a safari room? And I said, no, not yet. But I didn't want to buy it from them. Um, maybe I should have said yes, and that would have given that would have given them a bit of a clue that it needed to be fitted in such a place as to enable a safari room or privacy room to be fitted. However, while I'm over getting the aircon done, um, I've asked for Andy Leisure to give it a bit of a bit of a look and sort of measure it up for a privacy room, which I, I you know, if they say, yep, it, you know, it needs this thing, um, you know, I'll, I'll probably just order it from them and um, then I shall fit it and take some photographs of it either working or it not working. Now, obviously, the the best situation is that it works, it fits, it works, and it's all fine, and there's no issue. That's the best situation. Worst situation is that you know the the side of the privacy room actually stops the door opening. That'd be the worst of all situations because I then got to go back to Travel World and say, look. <laughs> This just doesn't work, and I'm not sure. Although I've been told by my legal advice that that would make pretty much the whole van unusable, I'm not. I'm not sure whether in a court of law they would say, uh, "Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't use that." So, so I, you know, I don't want to be in that position. I don't want to be there. Um, you know, we we love living in this van and um we don't want it we don't want it to go anywhere so um my best situation is that it works maybe the middle situation is that it might not work and and the awning that we've got can be moved without any real damage to the van because that would be a well I you know I don't I don't really want that you know it, it's such a hard thing to you know you've got you paid all this money and it's not quite right but you love it and you're prepared to put up with a few wrinkles maybe um yeah so that's where we are with that so it it's not it's not all bad we you know the electric trips out the TV um, would absolutely just shut off if I took the aerial cable out. Now I think 
I found what the problem was with that. The 12 volt plug, which is under the chair, just there in a in a cupboard. Um, you know, it's the standard sort of cigarette lighter type plug-in thing. Um, it wasn't plugged in properly, so I don't think it was all earthing out um, properly. So, you know, the standby light would come on and it would sort of gradually dim down. And when you switched it on, it would come back on. It would go blue for the on position. And then the, the screen would flash up with the Avtex logo. Um, uh, yeah, so... Um, But I, you know, I think I've spotted that and plugged it back in. It's been working all right. So, um, hi, Adrian. Um, yeah. yeah, and Adrian saying it seems a shame to have to go back to trouble with such trivial mistakes. Um, uh, mind you, they turned off my fridge that was full of food while it was in for a service. Yeah. See, there's the thing. I think. I think, Travel World are. A good company, um, I think they, I think they care, but their lack of attention to detail is shocking. You know, if I mean they didn't valet the, the van, and even when they had another two times, I still found little cable ends that where where they'd been fitting cables to for the extra TV point and so on. And I found a whiteboard pen, which must have been back from the NEC show that this van was at. Um, you know, their, their comment, you know, I, when I said to them, you know, maybe I wouldn't have uh, accepted such a, a high price for an ex show van. Um, they, sort of came back and said well you saw the mileage uh, yeah and it was 127 when we first saw it um and we were told it had been taken to a to a photo shoot because it was like a special you know limited edition van it had been taken to a photo shoot and brought back that's what we were told by the salesman we were not told it had been used at a show um, with people trooping in and out of it. We weren't told that. Um, and, you know, but their position is, well, you saw the mileage, you knew it had been used, you knew it was a showroom model, and, you know, tough shit. Uh, that, that's it, basically. You've negotiated the price based on what you saw, and that's it. I guess there's not much, uh, not, not many places you can go with that sort of attitude. Um, clearly, you know, They've got my money, I've got the van, and, you know, they don't want it to change from any of that. So um, it's up to me to prove, I think, that they've got something fundamentally wrong. Yeah, <laughs> they're like every motor dealer I've ever used uh, down the years. Mostly useless once they have your money. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right, Adrian. Um, you know, yeah. Yeah, I yeah I'm sure they were. They seem to have really good intention, but you know, with a with a commercial angle, so they don't want to lose money. You know, I mean, when we ask for an extra TV point and a TV in the bedroom, yeah, you know, they said, oh yeah, da, da, da. and by the way, they charged us eight hundred quid to do that, so to fit a PowerPoint and an Abtex TV uh, and an aerial blah, 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 and all the rest of it. Um, you know, it wasn't cheap. But then, when they came to fit the TV bracket, they'd spec'd the wrong bracket that wouldn't fit. Um, and when I said, well, you know, what's the solution? It's like, well, you know, uh, there isn't one, really. So we'll have to drill holes through the mirror and you know, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, there was a solution, and it's a more expensive bracket that fits in the corner um, and has, like, loads and loads of screws, so it doesn't have to have these big bolts through the wall. And that bracket 
is an extra £400. Now, I complained bitterly about that, and eventually I was, you know, I was so worn down on the day that I settled for paying an extra £100 because they said, look, you know, we, we can you know we can do something and we'll you know we'll share the cost of it blah 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 but you need to pay 100 pounds and i was so worn down with nowhere to live that night that i that i said oh, all right look, yeah fine i'll just pay 100 pounds um i don't know it, it just seems like yeah disappointment all round for me i think um with with the with their sort of attitude i think and i think when you're ever dealing with anybody especially when you're paying a high amount of money it's all about the attitude it is all about the attitude and it doesn't seem to be you know they're very apologetic about things um that hadn't been done um <laughs> i think the dealers are too successful for their own good Need to focus more on getting it correct. Yeah, our attention to detail, Adrian, from Travel World is, well, next to zero. They, I mean, they just, there's no attention to detail. Even, like, we had uh, a fit-to-go tyre pressure monitor system fitted to all the wheels and so on. And there's a little, there's a round thing that fits to the windscreen, and it has a square solar panel that keeps the monitor running right but they got it you know i expected that to be dead level like square and it was off by about 10 degrees and that really bugged me so when they replaced the cracked windscreen <laughs> um i said you know i said look i want that dead level and the you know, James, the service manager in there, said, "Well, sometimes people have them have them fitted on on an angle so that the sensor readout inside points towards the driver." Now, I don't know anybody that would want it fitted crookedly. I mean, that would just be ridiculous, unless it was like completely at. A, you know the square was then turned into a diamond shape uh, and that might be okay but even then it would bug me from the inside because all the you know this circular readout thing would be at a weird weird angle um you know james has only been working there a few weeks <laughs> james only anyway, well he's got a lot of blooming work to do isn't he uh james, he's a big He's a big guy, and he was really under pressure. But um, and another thing, when when we were sort of finishing off, <laughs> yeah, to collect the van, we were having a look in the gas locker, and um, the salesman was there, Frank, and James was there, and Annabelle was there, <laughs> um, and the gas we'd locked the gas locker, one of the. Yeah, and and all these all the lockers on the outside they you know you turn the key it the thing pops out and then you turn it to un to unlatch it of course when you turn it back you're supposed to press it back in so that it clicks into lock well one of the gas locker things didn't click into lock and it wouldn't and it you know and i said look you know what we're we gonna do about that it won't lock and frank the salesman says oh you need <laughs> you need to bang it hard I thought, you know, this is this is like a seventy grand bit of machinery made in Germany. I'm sure the Germans never engineered it so that end users would have to bang it hard. Anyway, James went and got his oil can and squirted some oil in, and sure enough, that fixed it. And it's all about the little spring inside. It, you know, sometimes you know jams up as springs do, and now all the all the locks just. You know, you unlock them, lock them, press it back in. It just goes click, and it's it's as you would expect German engineering to be. It's nice and smooth and, and lovely. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think you know, there's a lot of work that they have to do over there to get their 
No, I think I think it's attitude and thinking. Um, that's my experience. You know, working working in many corporate environments and you know trying to get things right and attention to detail. <laughs> yeah, you try. Yeah, it's actually um, the magic oil is uh, it's a it's a can of what might be loosely termed WD forty, but it's it it's made in Germany and probably supplied by Heimer, and it you know it's a squirty can with the little tube. It's an aerosol can with a little tube that squirts that sort of oily stuff. Um, yeah, loosening fluid. WD forty, whatever. Yeah, that was the that was the first one of those that came out that that wasn't uh, that wasn't three in one oil that that you know loosened off rust and stuff like that. Um, but it was it was covered in German. <laughs> oh, need to include Ross in your communication, the boss man. Oh, right, okay. Well, I'm in touch with Amanda, um, who's she said. Well, it, it, you know it's. I'm part of the family who own the firm, so I guess, you know. And she seemed genuinely shocked at the state of the van. I mean, she was so helpful and nice. I complimented on her, I complimented her on how she dealt with us um, and all the things that were, that were going on. She came in, took photographs of all the issues with the valeting and the bits and pieces so you know i think i'm i, I mean the biggest the biggest problem for me is going to be this blooming awning because it's stuck to the outside with that sycaflex stuff which i'm told can come off and leave the surface clean but you know i'm i'm sort of wondering well how many holes did they drill in the side and you know can it be moved forward? Can it be moved? You know, are the holes in the awning movable? Or would they have to buy another awning and sort of drill? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, we'll see. Um, but I'm, uh, as I say, I'm due to go over to any Leisure to get the aircon fitted. It's going to be there for the whole morning. I think it, you know, I'm due to drop it off there at half eight. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Adrian says, give them a chance to fix it before the lawyers are involved. Yeah, you're right. Um, but I have needed to take legal advice just to find out what my what my rights are. And the Caravan Club has a free legal helpline, or the Motorhome and Caravan Club now it's called. So I've phoned them and got that. And, you know, they were... <sighs> As these free legal helplines are, they're always a bit vague. But at least I know that I'm, I've got the rights on my side. And I do have more rights up to... Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe the lawyers need a slap too. Yeah, you're right. They probably do. Most lawyers do. Um, <laughs> in my experience, anyway. Uh, I do have, up until the 23rd of August where I have more rights than after. So when you, when you buy a motorhome, you have 30 days from collection if there's anything fundamentally wrong with it, and I don't think there is anything fundamentally wrong. Hi, Danny. Uh, yeah, um, I don't think there's anything wrong fundamentally with the motorhome, so I don't think I've got really the opportunity to reject it completely but you do have that right up to 30 days to reject it if there's a fundamental problem so like you know if the engine was broken within 30 days through through no fault of my own then i could reject the whole van as being not fit for purpose and they would have to give me all of my money back and make sure that i had somewhere to live uh, yeah yeah, yeah, I mean, I always think it's good to know the legal position, but never to go there. Um, so you know, I'm, I'm, I like, I like to know what the legal rights are and what my rights are in general, and then to really be soft about 
the position and you know and just ask nicely and then if I don't get a nice response ask a bit firmer right? and and continue piling on the pressure until you say right okay here's a here's a letter from the lawyers uh, no rejecting the motorhome things are not that bad no I no as I've just said there's nothing fundamentally wrong with Jasmine Meyer it's this bloody awning that's bugging me to bits I tell you uh, just really really getting right under my skin uh, yeah um, yeah you're right Adrian says that you know <laughs> yeah no, no worries Danny um, yeah, I do need to let them know that I know my legal rights. So um, I think they've got an impression of that because I've been fairly forceful so far in saying, look, you know, these are the problems. You need to sort these out and it's not down to me. And they have asked me for photographs and, and evidence of, of the things being wrong. They're not, they're not just going to take my word for it. Oh, this is wrong. Okay, well, we'll fix that. Although, weirdly... They have said, <laughs> I said the TV keeps going off, and they've and they've just said, oh, we'll order a new one. Um, whatever. Not really bothered. Um, maybe it is the TV. I don't know. Um, maybe it is. So I've I've not dissuaded them from doing that anyway. But there you are. So that's where we are with the motorhome. Um, before I went live today. So I keep looking up here at the time I'm doing. Um, uh, it's factory fit. fitted or fitted by the dealer. It was the awning was fitted by the dealer. It's not factory, because the the motorhome that we've got was in their showroom. It was one of six uh, golden limited editions that they were sent by Hymer at a, a quite a big yeah. discount. Um, about not, nearly nine thousand pound discount, which was good. So that that was passed on to us. So, so we got stuff. Um, the reason we went for the Heimer, uh, and, and let me just quickly run over why we went, how we got here. We were looking for motorhomes. Um, I started off looking at American stuff with slide outs, too big, and then we started to look at the Bursners that were on site where we are uh, uh, yeah yeah you know, you've always got to provide photos of stuff that's wrong but anyway we started looking at Burstners um, and I was looking at the elegance the Burstner elegance um, I eight uh, nine eight ninety something but they but they work out at like 105 grand or something and we just didn't have that money um, we didn't want to spend that much. We had the money, but we didn't want to spend that much. It's just you know, this was, this was probably fifteen grand more than we wanted to spend. Anyway, so then we started looking at the the X the Burstner Ixios, which seemed really nice, and we went to MB over in Bury. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Danny's just saying that you know the idiots fitted in the wrong place. They'll have to fit a long one on the top of the door and move it along. You know, leave holes on. Yeah, I'm sure it will. I mean, you know, it depends on where the holes are or and how effectively they can actually seal them. That's what I'm more worried about. Um, because over time, and we intend to own this for ten years, over time those holes might become water ingress points which we know about to our cost anyway so we started looking at the first Ixio lovely 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 and we went to MB in Berry, and they had one over there um, an Ixio 728G beautiful same layout as we've got here um, although the shower and bathroom were in one cubicle and it had a slightly bigger kitchen and maybe a smaller garage so maybe it's you know, it's the same, but the same size actually but then um mb pissed us off by trying to pressure sell us on the, on two vans so we started looking elsewhere they never got back in touch with us until after they'd sold 
the Ixio that they had. And they emailed us and say, oh, we've sold the Ixio you were interested in. So I, you know, I just arse, assholes basically. Anyway, um, so we, we found Travel World, looked at this Heimer. It was the first one we saw in the showroom. It was exactly the same layout apart from it has a separate shower cubicle. Quality-wise, it's a level up, and it, and it really is. You just feel that everything's just a little bit tighter. You know, just the, the switches and the handles, it's just a little bit better. And it, it is, and I, you know, and I think it's worth the extra money we paid. It really, really is. Although we didn't get leather upholstery, so what? But we do, we have sure guarded it. Um, so, and we've already spilt a can of beer over it. No, no ill effects from that. We just squirted it with the spray we got in the kit and uh, soaked it up. <laughs> Heimer are the best, despite dopey dealers, says Adrian. Yes, you're right, Adrian. <laughs> That's funny. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's how we sort of got here. Um, yeah. But the, you know, so it's not, it's not a factory made for us motorhome. It was one we saw. Um, yeah. Well, actually, uh, Danny says, he, he agrees with Adrian, Heimer are top. Well, actually, they're not. According to Heimer, they're not. It's the Niesman Bischoff is the top. And if you go into a Niesman Bischoff um, van, you'll see why. Because they are a step up in quality again. That it, it's, you know, <laughs> our caravan was like a, a hovel compared to a five star hotel that we're in now. But this is like a three star hotel compared to the. Niesman Bischoff Five Star Hotel, if that makes sense. They're, they're just that that much better. But they do cost... I mean, the reason I contacted Travel World, um, and I think a couple of reasons, Adrian, I think you, you told me um, to go and have a look at Travel World. So thanks for that. <coughs> and um, also, I was looking around and I... I um, spotted this Niesman Bischoff van, Niesman Bischoff van, which was the right shape and size, and all the bits and pieces. They had loads of stuff on it, and a phone for a price. It was 104 grand. <laughs> Same van as this, not much, not much more on it, but all all the quality bits. And it was 104 thousand pounds. Not not me. Uh, uh, no. Anyway, um, so so that's that's how we got here. And I wanted that rollout awning, um, basically, so that when we pop off for a few days and, you know, want a bit of shelter. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would have been more pissed off had I paid 150 grand and had similar problems. Yes, you're right. And there are vans in on their lot, on their showroom, that are that much money. Um, you know the big sort of A class type, you know the huge vans. Uh, they're lovely, 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 but you know just too big. This um, this van is exactly the right shape and size for us. It it's beautiful. Um, you know I'm hoping that I don't have a special mic, uh, so I'm recording on an iPad with the built-in microphone, and I think you can probably hear, as I can, the nice dampened sound. I, you know, I'm, I'm sort of planning um, up, just up here, as you can see up there, that's the, this, this sort of shelf thing up here, and you might be able to see this, that's where the speaker is for the radio, but there's a nice piece of wood that I can clamp a, um, a studio microphone on um, to do some podcasts that I keep planning to do. Never get round to actually having a B 
bit of spare time to do it. I, you know, I think my spare time is spent mm, thinking about making videos for this vlog and watching YouTube videos on other stuff I'm interested in. So I don't, you know, my, my spare time not that productive. I could be more productive, um, but that's been my story. I could be more productive. Anyway, I think uh, after all this rabbiting on, um, you would have heard yesterday that we're on this uh, dry August <laughs> kick. And uh, do you know what? Today, uh, <laughs> thought my spare time, Adrian says, thought my spare time was spent chasing dopey dealers. No, no, I, you know, stuff happens, doesn't it? Uh, you know, just, but, um, so we're day five into dry August. And you know what? I, I, after the, we had a bit of a, you know, we had a bit of a day today. I mean, we were, we were on for the full day with, you know, 15 people leaving, 15 people coming. Um, so it was a busy day. Full bins everywhere, a couple of toilet cleans, and da -da, all the rest of the stuff. A good day, a good day, but do you know what? I could have really, <laughs> I could have really had a glass of wine tonight. <laughs> Instead, I did the worst thing. I had a can of Coke. You know, who does that? Me. Um, but over the past couple of days, we've been drinking. Um, let me let me just grab i'm just going to grab from the fridge before we go so hold for a moment oh oh we haven't got any where did that orange oh there it is yeah. instead of wine Sorry, guys, instead of wine, we're buying things like this. <laughs> Perrier lemon, sparkling water, uh, Rubicon. And I've never had Rubicon spring before. Uh, this is black cherry and raspberry. <laughs> wine is better than Coke. Use Coke to clean your drains. Yeah, you're right. I stopped drinking. Oh, Danny stopped drinking in June 95. Well done. And... Well, I say well done. Are you <laughs> are you still not drinking alcohol? Or was it just one day? Um, let, let me know. Um, and this stuff, the Bundaberg Blood Orange flavor. <laughs> oh yeah. So Danny, well done. Uh, not drank since June '95. Um, in fact. The guy that recommended that we buy a Burstner um, was a <laughs> was a um, a recovering alcoholic. He he hasn't he hasn't drank for years and years and years, um, and he said he now spends all his money on buying motorhomes, <laughs> which is quite amusing. I thought. Um, but anyway, back to the drinks. This stuff, you'll see, it's quite it's quite, sort of pink. And it is that sort of pink colour, this this colour, not that. The light's getting to it. Yeah, there you go. It's that pink colour. Um, it's Bundaberg Blood Orange flavoured sparkling drink. Australian family owned and bouncy because it's got a kangaroo on it. Um, uh, yeah, 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 I think people think that maybe we have a drinking problem certainly our children do um they've always think we were drunken idiots i think <laughs> and we have been at times <laughs> but you know i mean we don't drink all the time we sort of never have we're more i don't know whether it's good or bad i always thought it's good um i'm much more of a binge drinker I can be off the booze for for days, weeks, months, and then really have a binge, like go out for a big night and have like 10 pints of lager and finish off the evening with, 
vodkas and whiskies and wine and stuff and then get up for work at seven in the morning um when i was working properly um <laughs> and that would that you know and i always felt okay with that i'm, I'm not sure i'd deal with it now at 60 um that was back in my 30s and 40s but yeah. anyway these i think are very very nice i love these <laughs> but get, apparently they're quite expensive i don't know how much um oh danny what jobs have i done have you got time to listen um i've had so many jobs average average life expectancy of a job for me um two years so i didn't stay in the job much uh the longest uh the longest running job i had was when i worked for nestle or nestles at their head office in Croydon and I was there for five and a half years best best time ever because <laughs> um, I never really did any work and I got paid for it and I drank a lot um, and got to travel around the country doing projects in factories um, so I learned a lot about food manufacturing uh, oh Adrian's all in the printing trade. Well, I started my working life in the printing trade. My mum said to me, there's a job in Purley at printers, uh, printers called Sherwood Press. And I went for the interview, got the job as a litho printer. Learned how to be a litho printer. I was rubbish at it. But I spent 25 years being a litho printer, which got me into um, Apple Macs. Uh, ran my own little printing business, which went okay. Apart from when the 1989 recession kicked in. Oh, you used to make plates, Adrian. Yeah, I used to make plates. But, you know, I used to make plates for the Sun Alliance printing implant um, to print all their insurance policies and stuff like that. I learnt all the darkroom stuff, um, lift film, stripping in on light tables and all that sort of stuff. Um... I, learned, I sort of learnt all the bits and pieces and was actually a member of the National Graphical Association um, trade union at one point. Yeah, I never made the move to really to digital printing. I was out of the trade by then. Um, I tried by hand. Uh, what did I do after printing? I, I was so bad at printing, I got fired from a couple of jobs. I was so bad at it. Um, <laughs> I once printed, uh, printed them the cover of uh, the Woodworker magazine for <laughs> for a company in Brighton and I was called to the office uh, <laughs> at the well, middle of my shift which was nine o'clock in the evening and I was shown um, 20 magazines each one had a different colour wood on it <laughs> um, that was co colour cover and I, yeah, oh, I just, and anyway they said well you know, what have you got to say? I said, well, I can't say anything. Um, not really. And they said, well, here's your P45, go home. <laughs> so I left that day. <laughs> oh, funny when you look back. Um, but then I've tried my hand at selling life insurance. Never very good at that either. Um, and I've been a pro photographer. I love photography, um, but hated being a pro photographer. Hated selling it, you know, I just I stopped picking up the camera for fun um, when I was doing that and never really made any money at it. And then I fell into, I'd always been interested in computers and stuff, and I fell into the sort of online marketing arena, sort of search engine optimization. And um, that sort of went okay, and I started to make a bit of money out of that, um, which which was all right. Um sort of paid my way just about um tough business to be in and sort of what i do now on and off build websites uh do a bit of seo and i sort of these days laughingly call myself a coach uh so i'm i'm better at teaching than i am at doing i've got no focus whatsoever uh, i can't focus on anything um what is SEO? It's search engine optimization, and it's the way that you write stuff 
and build websites to help the likes of Google and Bing to place your content at the top of the search results when people are searching for whatever. Uh, yeah, I'm sort of retired now. Um, well, I, we did retire. We we spent year, five years looking after Wendy's parents and then we sort of took a year off, called it our gap year. And then we thought, mm, maybe we should earn a bit of money. And we picked up this lovely part-time job um, that pays us enough um, to live on and have a very nice lifestyle and spend more time making vlogs than we do on anything else. So, um, you yeah, know, we work a couple of, well, actually these days we work four days a week. Um, because we, you know, because it's a busy time, we work Thursdays as well. But then we work normal is, well, weirdly, our contracted hours are Saturday and Sunday. Um, but our usual is Friday afternoon, Saturday and Sunday. Um, but now we work Thursday, then Friday afternoon, Saturday and Sunday. But when we get quiet again, when the summer eases off and we go in through September, we'll kick back down to... Um, uh, thanks, Adrian. I'm glad you enjoy the vlogs. This one's been going on far too long. Um, so... Um, yeah, we'll we'll sort of kick back down to Friday afternoon, Saturday and Sunday, um, you know, and that and that'll be fine, you know, because that will give us more time off to go travelling, which is what this vlog should really be all about. The happy travellers is what we are. We're very happy, um, but we're not very travelly at the moment. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm hoping that we can. Well, actually, in September. We booked some holiday, um, and if you look back through the comments from yesterday, I was just saying that to somebody, I can't remember who, um, sorry about that, um, that we're going to make a trip, a venture into Scotland, um, and go up the east coast a bit. Um, we're not, you know, well I think Wendy's got a plan to, at some point to do the Scotland 500 which is a sort of 500 mile round trip around Scotland um, but we're not you know, you know we, we'll be away for like 10 days oh maybe we'll meet along the way Adrian in Scotland well you know we'll be sort of saying more or less where we are and you know if you're around please do knock on our door you'll you'll know who we are because we'll be in a Heimer T six seven eight CL Golden Limited Edition, and I'm absolutely confident it will be the only one in Scotland, um, as there aren't many in the country. I think I think there must be a, maybe there's twenty in the country. I don't know. Anyway, I've not seen another one. I've not seen another new Heimer motorhome in the. 600 odd miles I've done so far hmm. maybe I'll see another one anyway I'm going to call it a day because it's getting late um, and we got another big day tomorrow, we've got Sunday it's a standard Sunday tomorrow with lots of checkouts um, and lots more stuff to do uh, so that'll be it for today um Good night, Danny. Uh, <laughs> thanks for that. And uh, I'll see you again tomorrow. And uh, just before this vlog started, Wendy was saying to me, we must show them the bedroom and what's in the cupboards and how the bedroom works. Yeah. Bye, Adrian. Good night. Oh, thanks, Mike. Mike Potts. Good night. Night, night, everybody, from Adrian. Um, and... Good night from me, and it's good night from Wendy. She's over there in bed. See you again soon. Well, tomorrow. Um, uh, yeah, I'm tired. Good night. Should be good what? Now, we should wait, wait, wait. The the hoi polloi is telling me to wait, wait, wait. Wait for what? I've not ended it yet. I've cancelled it. 
what am I waiting for? <laughs> right, five, four, <laughs> three, two, <laughs> one. The hoi polloi, good night. <laughs> You've lost your chance there.